Hi friends, welcome to Back to Basics. This is like another episode that is just so exciting for me. Uh, I have uh, invited a guest, which is very, uh, uh, very awesome musician, uh, instrumental guy. I don't know how to express this guy, but this is just amazing. So a form of art, another form of art is music. It doesn't matter what language you speak. It doesn't matter what it is. It's the rhythm. It's the, the tone. It's according to the Indian uh, word called tal and sur. So we, we want to get into that aspect of it. It's nothing to do with what language you speak or anything. It's more of a rhythm in your heart, in your soul. And that's what this, this person is going to express his feelings regarding his passion. He is a... Uh, a daytime he used to be something else and uh, his passion is this so we will explain and we will go through that journey with this uh, person that we're going to speak to his name is Vishal Malik and I hope that you will enjoy the show if you have any comments or anything like that please subscribe and uh, please let us know your your feedback and we'll get these type of uh, guests in our show so now let's speak with uh, Vishal Malik and uh, his whole uh, journey. My pleasure. Thank you for inviting me to your wonderful uh, uh, chat show called Back to Basics. Pleasure yeah. to be here. Yeah, yeah. So Vishal, so you are based out of uh, India, correct? Yes, I'm based out of India and within India, Gurgaon, uh, which is the you know city where you have a lot of these corporates, so a lot of action here. And I used to live in Delhi, Girish. Uh, for, for almost 12 years, I was working... I was living in Delhi and working in Gurgaon yeah. and the commute was killing. You know, we would spend, both me and my wife used to work together and we would we would almost spend, you know, almost two hours one day. And then in 2012, we said, okay, enough of, uh, you know, commuting. We actually calculated two and a half years of our effective time was spent on road mm -hmm. <laughs> in the 12 years. And sure. we said, we can do a lot more with that time. And we moved to Gurgaon. In fact, that transition also helped me do a lot more of music, which we are going to talk about, uh, you know, as we go. So 2012, I moved to Gurgaon. So that's where I live now. So, so music didn't really just happen two years within two, I'm sorry, 2011. I'm, I'm pretty sure this must have happened way before that. So yeah. can you explain that transition of how that process started for you? Yeah, so music was always, I think I was born with the, with the talent. And it's very funny because my parents were mathematic teachers. Uh, and my mother used to sing. She still sings whenever she's cooking in the kitchen. And I guess that's why the food tastes so good. And my father used to sing in the bathroom. And earlier in those days, we used to have those tape recorders where he would record, uh, you know, his song. So I think it is the combination of mathematics and those amateur musician that my parents were that those genes kind of mutated in me and I had developed this deep passion for music so right from school days I was quite passionate about music uh, you know started with one basic instrument which was on bongo and then I picked it up and then you know gradually uh, my parents they kept uh, you know buying me whatever I wanted to buy they did not have any knowledge but they kept buying me whatever I wanted to buy sure. and I started learning music myself and I think that's where uh, I realized that, you know, I am born with, I'm blessed with this kind of a, a art in me. So I would, you know, pick up an instrument, you know, a few days I will, uh, even in those days, there was no YouTube, but I was able to kind of, you know, figure it out myself. Yeah. Um, so it started from school. And then, you know, as you get into college, you get more exposure in Delhi University. Back in our days, there used to be college festivals where we would go and start performing. Then we got connected to a musician, uh, uh, a music director in, yes. in Delhi. Now yes. a big name in Bollywood. His name is Shantanu Moitra. Mm -hmm. uh, Shantanu is a music director for movies like Three Idiots, Munna Bhai, MBBS, uh, so and so forth. Uh, so we used to start, you know, we started doing jingles for Shantanu. So he would record these ad jingles and he would call us. We used to we would get 1500 rupees for every jingle and that used to be good money in college days. Sure, uh, sure. So, you know, that's where, that's how it kept going on. And in 1996, uh, Girish, I got an opportunity to represent India in an international music concert called Voice of Asia. Mm -hmm. So this was an annual event that used to happen, I think, till 
uh, till 2012 or 13. Thereafter, they stopped. So it would happen in Kazakhstan in a skiing stadium, and you would have you know bands form across Asian countries who would come and then they would compete for this title. Mm -hmm. uh, and we were selected from India in in, in 1996, and uh, you know it was a great year for us. And we thought you know our band, which also had Shantanu and you know a bunch of other folks that we would get the kind of recognition or at least I had the plans to kind of build my career in music. Was there, a, was... Was there a name of a band that you uh, presented to everyone? Yeah, yeah, so it was very funny. We used to call ourselves Charisma. And then we went to, uh, you know, this is 96. So, you know, we were again, not very well aware about what was happening in the world. And then we went to Russia, they changed our name to Karishma. Okay, so we were called Karishma when we went on stage. Uh, but it was fun. It was fun. And, you know, when I came back, the, the idea was, okay, now I will work towards building a career in music. But, you know, like it happened in Bollywood films, uh, it was a very similar scene. The day I landed, I had a lot of people at my home and my father had cancer. Uh, and But, you know, he was operated and everything had worked, gone out well. And we were thinking, okay, he's back to normal. But when I was away in Kazakhstan, they did some tests and they found in the scans that, you know, my father is at a very late stage and it has record. And, you know, he had a couple of months to live. Mm -hmm. So, um, so when I came back home and I saw all of that and it was a big shock. And uh, Girish, 1996, uh, music wasn't a dependable career option, at least in India. Mm -hmm. I do not know about other locations. Right? Mm -hmm. Coming from middle class family, as I said, my parents were school teachers. Uh, you, you want to get into something which is more dependable, mm -hmm. uh, you know, where you can kind of build your career and and you know people would say okay keep doing music as a hobby but don't think of it as a profession so i had to kind of switch gears where i said okay now uh, this is not uh, you know something that i will pursue my friends on the other hand pursued this as a career so but i uh, moved i, I want to go back to basics on that part okay because it, it looks like it's more of uh, um, it's not really india and it's not really us it's actually worldwide if you really think about it it's more of a stereotype for for parents they feel that, you know, we should be in uh, IT field, we should be a doctor, we should be a lawyer. But people, yes, there is a struggle with, with the entertainment side of things. Yes, because there's not much money in the beginning. Okay, there will be money gradually. But then what, 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 a, what career does not have uh, less uh, uh, money coming in the, in the first place anyway, right? But I think at the end of the day, what we don't realize is I think passion is the key to happiness and a little of success for yourself, not the success around the world. Do you agree with that statement? I certainly do. I certainly do. But, you know, Girish, I also believe, uh, and I had, I had heard Shah Rukh Khan once, right? Shah Rukh Khan, of course, uh, all your listeners would be aware of, right? So I was, I was hearing him out and he was saying that, look, I want to pursue my passion and I want to be happy, but I also don't want to be poor. He said, if you are poor and happy, uh, you know, that is not a good state to be in. So he was giving examples that he would do movies that he really wants to do, invest his own money, but then go on a, you know, on a wedding and dance and, you know, do all those kind of things because he wants to earn money. So, yeah. you know, I understand that you sponsor your passion, right? Yeah. You need to, to sponsor your passion. And honestly, that's what I did. Uh, you know, post I started, I did my MBA, then I started working and I worked with McKinsey and company for almost 21 years. Yes. Uh, October 2020 is when I moved out. But, you know, once I got into the corporate world, it's not that I was, I stopped pursuing music. No. Uh, I pursued music, but that is more from, for a, from a passion perspective, not like from a commercial, making it a career perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I've seen some of my uh, you know, acquaintances who pursued music as a career, while some of them really made big, Girish, a lot of them kind of struggled to make, make their ends meet, right? So they would yeah. not, they would not have a life like you and I, right? Where we are okay. kind of secure in our careers and, and, you know, all the gear that some of the stuff that you see in the background and some, which is right, I'm sitting on my studio table now, I was able to create all of this and practice all of this because I had a way of earning money and I manage that. So, yes, I think, you know, in today's day and age, things would be very different because, uh, you know, the kind of opportunities that exist now, even for starting up artists, social media, if you are genuinely good, you start your YouTube channel and you get noticed. 
yeah. uh, right i was just seeing yesterday there was a girl who in a college who used to sing and created few videos ar rahman who's a great music director you know tweeted about her song and that yes. suddenly got her so much of fame right in today's day and age it is relatively easier uh, mm-hmm. to pursue uh, you know and people are willing to take that risk very early at their uh, you know in their in their state but um, you know honestly no regrets i think where i have reached uh, because of the decisions that i've made uh, you know, no regrets so so let's start with your transition um what was your first break i mean yes you said college but was that the first day that you realized that yes i think this is this is for me or what was it maybe was it before college that you actually said that yes this is my passion this is what i want to do yeah so i'll tell you a very specific story so i as i said i started playing music from the school and i used to be part of the school assembly right and and back in our days there used to be a morning assembly where we would sing prayers and all of that and i used to be the musician who was on the stage uh, but one you know one instance that i never for, that never uh, you know fades away from my memory is that uh, in delhi the summers are really hot right mm-hmm. so what i used to do was i would pick up my guitar and on a weekend and i would sit in my stairwell uh because you know there you would get that reverb effect uh back then we didn't used to have any studios and stuff like that so i would sit in stairs and sing for hours right mm-hmm. and i would not feel even once that i'm missing anything and i remember one instance where my mother came looking for me in the afternoon for having lunch and she walked in the you know she opened the door and she saw that the stairs were all wet mm-hmm. and that was because i sweat because i was sweating it was so hot and humid mm-hmm. but you know i was still enjoying so at that point in time nothing mattered to me right it was there was no physical discomfort that could bother you and i felt that oh wow you know i could sit here in the extreme heat humidity and sing because the moment i sing i forget everything else mm-hmm. so that really kind of told me that you know this is something that i'm really passionate about if i'm feeling low if that's what i pick up my guitar or pick up my harmonium or any instrument and start singing or playing that instrument you know that kind of relaxes you and brings you to normal so that specific thing i never forget uh, you know that, that summer afternoon when i was singing and my mother came looking for me so you when you when you mentioned uh, harmonium i i want to tell the audience and yourself which i'll um i i came from or or my background uh my grandfather used to be a uh, assistant director and a director in the bollywood movies back in black and white movies his name is uh, mr is uh, bali uh okay and then my father uh he never went into the business of uh bollywood or or music but he's a very well known in hong kong and in india with a harmonium and tabla singing so he used to do wow. qawalis and ghazals and uh, bhajans uh at the temples uh so yeah so i have a little uh, niche of uh you know the music uh part of me and obviously video is uh, in is part of me and that's why i started this uh, this small journey of my podcast but uh, okay. that that is why i called you and and music is very close to 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 my heart on that part so so vishal so so what was your 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 main turn point of your success that you felt yes i have arrived not russia not the voice of uh, anything else but i'm talking in bollywood itself yeah so i think uh i composed i started composing my own songs and that happened i i had this belief that i cannot write right i cannot write the song i can i can sing whatever i hear but i cannot write and i think this happened little later so when i joined mckinsey you know we i was part of the mckinsey's experiment that was called the knowledge center so mm-hmm. mckinsey created its knowledge center and the idea was how do you offshore the research and analytics capabilities uh, you know centrally in india uh, who could then work with mckinsey consultants globally Mm-hmm. so when i joined mckinsey knowledge center we were 20 of us working out of three rooms in taj palace hotel and just like a, it was it had a very startup kind of a culture and you know everyone would know everything about uh, everyone else and we would also spend a lot of good time you know uh, having good time together so i think it was at one of those parties that someone said okay why don't you create an anthem for uh, we used to call it mckc mckinsey knowledge center they said why don't you create an anthem for mckc i said look if you can write lyrics i can uh, you know i can compose and i can sing this and no you write as well 
so i said okay let me try and that that's when i wrote that song and uh, you know and i started singing it at parties i actually recorded it at a friend's studio and started singing at parties and everyone loved it i had recorded it in hindi but they said you know now that you've recorded it in hindi why don't you record it in english uh, i said okay let me record it in english so i you know changed the lyrics and i recorded it in english and um, then someone again you know this was a small company young people coming up with these creative ideas one of them said okay we have a lot of consultants who call us globally whenever they call us why don't we put this as a telephone on hold music on hold right so whenever if someone is kept on hold and you know this is the song that plays in the background yeah i said okay do it and our our you know our uh, boss was more of a friend than a boss and i have had highest regards for him the way mm-hmm. he kind of brought us up literally brought us up so he said okay let's do it let's experiment right so we did that experiment and that was you know amazing because so many and mckinsey i think that time had about 80 90 offices globally people would call us okay and say okay i don't want anything just put me on hold yeah okay because i want to listen to that song that got that you created and in 2002 or something like that that song got leaked so to say right back then internet was still early and that mp3 file got leaked and there was a corporate anthem rating website okay now that corporate anthem rating website rated it as the top corporate anthem in the world and you know there was there was there was news in the the guardian and few other uh, the times of uk right there were articles mm-hmm. about this uh, globally and i you know at one point in time i thought girish that i would be kicked out of mckinsey because you know there is a branding practice that looks sure. at all of these things of course this was not intention this was a fun party song that somehow got leaked but when people realized that you know i had no intentions of doing anything i got a lot of accolades and and appreciation so you know that was in a way transitioning where i had said okay i can compose as well i can write compose and sing before that it was only about i can play instruments and you know hear song and sing so i think that if you will that kind of broaden my horizons that okay i can write my own music i can mm-hmm. compose that i'm right and stuff like that so so vichal so let me go uh, out of uh, this uh, realm and let me ask you a question so back in the you know 50s and 60s and 70s songs right as compared to 90s and then now okay um i felt uh, i tend to forget lyrics in nowadays music as compared to 90s and before do you agree with that because uh, there are some songs that are very mel- uh, you know uh, amazing writing amazing music and now you just tend to forget and i think it's more of a trend so do you think the trend is kind of wrong or is it uh, is fading away and is going back to where it used to be yeah so i think i agree with you in terms of you know some of the most memorable songs if you look at a kishore kumar song right uh, you you listen to lata mangeshkar or rasha bosle which were the artists at those times right i think the songs had a lot more um, i mean they were poetic right the lyrics were poetic the it, it was a proper poet who was actually writing and they they very well connected to the theme of you know the movie they very well connected to the situation uh they would it was almost like you know actors are it, it felt like a continuous piece uh i think still i would not say you don't get those songs now i mean again you have some great singers and there are some great memorable songs but you are right i think there is a big percentage of songs which are created just based on what you know people want you have a very catchy kind of a hook hook line right sometimes those hook lines don't have any meaning but yeah. you know those are the songs that will play in those on those discs and people would love dancing uh, dancing on them i think that kind of thing and, and and as you rightly said girish you would those songs will be there f- for a short period of time yeah. but they would not be in your playlist right you go to spotify you will find kishore kumar playlist now but you will not find you know these today day and age songs in the playlist at least so do I, at least i feel because they're you know you you remember them for a a shorter period of time and you know then you forget uh so yeah i think those had much deeper meaning those were much kind of uh, you know the the music i somehow also feel that the music lyrics they were kind of integrated right so mm-hmm. the emotion was also expressed you would hear the tune and and if it is a happy song you would feel the melody will also convey that right yes. so that yeah. kind of well integrated well thought through uh which you do not find uh, you know as much now uh, but maybe that is also what 
you know the audience has evolved right people there is a there is a spectrum of audience who wants to listen to those kind of songs who probably don't have a you know much deeper meaning but they would just have a nice groove to it and they would feel relaxed and dance about it so yeah. i think it is catering to because you know the fact that that music is coming out is because there is a demand for it right so yes. there is an audience for that kind of uh, music as well yeah so uh, maybe i think it was a couple of weeks back or maybe a month back i don't remember vishal but uh there was an interview that i saw with uh, jatin lalit they have been away from the limelight for whatever years i think <clears throat> i want to say 10 to 12 years and i think whatever their re- their personal reasons are they are finally back and they're planning of doing something okay now those type of people i miss those uh the words the the melodies and uh the you know the crisp of uh, music Uh, so i think we are slowly diverting away from the actual music instruments the ones behind you okay versus the technology based uh you know so i i feel that we should get the music back no matter what it is uh it doesn't matter what uh, what country we're talking about yes uh you and me are from uh, you know background is india uh so we have a lot of uh, uh music history behind behind us but i'm pretty sure there's other countries out there also like for example united states there's a whole bunch of rock and roll and rock and roll is fading away also uh because i'm a big fan of uh metallic and acdc and uh, uh depeche mode uh those musics are are kind of lost and i'm i'm still trying to find uh, records of those and i have a, a big record player and i've just bought a talat uh, uh talat mahmood uh, uh, album just a few weeks yeah. back and that was back in the 50s yeah so i i miss uh, those type of uh, old uh, music uh, vishal so i do as well and hopefully, <laughs> hopefully you can contribute to good music uh, later on in, in time yeah yeah let's see and you know i was saying i have a 16 year old daughter at home and she listens to k pop yes okay so BTS is a, is a big band i think all over the world yes and i also feel you know really uh, impressed by what these guys have been able to create right they have yes. been able to create a followership which is and and that you know something that you started with saying that music has no language right my daughter doesn't know anything about korean and she and her friends are like crazy about this band yes. and their music right and she remembers the lyrics as well and that surprises me she doesn't know the language but she can sing their songs yeah right yeah. which is yeah. which is uh, which is a great accomplishment i would say to those guys you know coming from korea and they've been able to build a greater you know world over reputation out for themselves yeah yeah so which are let, let me go with, uh, back to your journey now so regarding this uh, tech talks can you explain yeah. that uh, of how that happened and what what we should be expecting if we google you and we do tech talks what what are we supposed to see out of that so tech talk was just one i would say the broader thing that i started doing i call them leadership jams mm-hmm. okay or management jams and girish just before i started talking to you, i was talking to my mentor from mckinsey he's a he's a gentleman named ralph johnson based out of the cleveland office of mckinsey and company and he's been my mentor for so many years and once you know he told me vishal you would create magic if you bring who you are into what you do you know and that that statement stayed with me for all these years he said you would create magic if you bring who you are into what you do and what he meant was that all of us have a day job or something that we do right but internally we are something else for example for me it is music for you i don't know if it is being a teacher for someone else it's being a sportsman right at heart you are a sportsman at heart you are a teacher at heart you are a musician right he said if you are able to bring that part into what you do and that's where the magic happens right so that was kind of constantly playing in my head okay how do i bring who am i into what i do and um, so i reflected over my you know corporate experience of whatever 15 20 years and i said look and this is i'm talking about 5 years back when i started doing it i said look i have so much of experience in in one of the top organizations in the world i have exposure of working internationally i have i've been doing a lot of coaching and uh, you know capability building uh, in my organization so i said and and i have music as a talent how about i combine all of this together to create something which is very interesting and very unique and that's where i started doing what i call as management jams or leadership jams so it is essentially 
uh, you know, teaching management or leadership foundational principles mm -hmm. and bringing in music, right? Mm -hmm. Connecting the lesson to a song that that represents that uh, that message really well, right? Mm -hmm. That somehow kind of connects to that message really well. Mm -hmm. So I started doing it at one college, uh, Girish, and students loved it because they had never experienced something like that. So imagine a class of 100 people singing a Bollywood song and taking a message out of it. A management lesson that they can apply to their workplace. Yeah. Uh, so once I and there are around six or six or seven colleges in and around Delhi where I do this now. I do this pro bono because that is my passion, and I do it. And also I do it because I feel you know that is my way of giving back to you know to the students and 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 the corporate world um, in general. And then you know there are a lot of friends who are CEOs of companies. They found out that this is what I do, so they started inviting me. So I would go to the leadership offsites. I would go to their annual 1,000 member conferences, and I would do those, deliver those five or six lessons, which could have been delivered by a boring presentation that everyone would like to sneak out of, or out of, versus being delivered through music and singing, where everyone just wants to, you know, extend that session as much as possible, right? So that's how I started doing it, which I call, as I said, leadership jams. Mm -hmm. uh, six colleges and the TED talk that you talked about in December, 2020, I was invited by IIM Ahmedabad, which is one of the top most management schools in India. Uh, they were doing their TEDx uh, event and they wanted me to come there and, 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 you know, do my session because one of the students, uh, he was uh, in his undergrad college. He had attended my workshop. I of course did not remember him, mm -hmm. but he remembered me. And then he pitched me to the panel and somehow, you know, I got that opportunity. So that TED talk is going to be on air, I think, uh, in February, because TED is doing some post-production work, mm -hmm. after which it will be released on the platform. But essentially, what I do is combine music management and leadership development. And, uh, you know, that is my Ikigai. You know, we've all heard about Ikigai, which is at cusp of so many things. So that is mm -hmm. my Ikigai. Well, I, I hope uh, later in future, Vishal, uh, I can be your student and then I will uh, learn a little <laughs> of uh, music from you and, and, awesome. and a little tips from you, if that's okay with you. Sure. So Vishal, uh, you have started a YouTube channel. Do you want to yes. talk about that? Yes. So that YouTube, so again, you know, uh, whenever I would do these sessions at colleges, Girish, I always used to get feedback forms in the end. And the intention was to see whether I have created value for the students or not. And if they have some suggestions for me. And I think one suggestion that I constantly got, I mean, people love the sessions and that kind of motivated me to do more. They said, you know, why don't you put it on YouTube? Because there are so many people that you can reach physically. And especially when you're working, doing a day job, you only have your weekends to it. And you can spend like, you know, two, three weekends in a, or two weekends in a month and do it. So there are so much reach you can do. So they always say that, you know, why don't you start a YouTube channel and stuff like that. So it was there on my mind. Uh, but I was procrastinating, not doing much on it. But now that I, you know, I took a sabbatical in October uh, because I had almost worked for 21 years in my organization and I had a lot of these creative desires to do a lot of stuff. So I thought, okay, let me take a pause and, and fulfill some of these desires. So I have created this channel, which I call Let's Ascend, uh, which is about how do you rise up in life, right? That is the whole essence of Let's Ascend. How do you rise up in life? And through that, I'm going to try and... Uh, you know, interview people because everyone, Girish, uh, you know, you, me included, everyone go through these ups and downs in your life, right? Mm -hmm. And when you are down, that's where you need some kind of, you know, uh, some advice, guidance, lessons on how do you rise up going through a challenging phase. So uh, I'm going to interview a lot of people. Uh, these are accomplished uh, you know, professionals from the corporate world, even from the music entertainment world and talk about how did they rise up when they went through something uh, difficult, right? So it's all about rising up. Uh, that's the intention. And I'm going to also blend in music. Uh, so these the lessons would be like I talked about, it will be in the form of those leadership jams, mm -hmm. where we would conclude each chapter or each kind of, uh, you know, message with something which a song that connects to the message. So that's the intention. Uh, I've just started it. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited about it, because that's something that I wanted to pursue. And I also wanted to le leave kind of a a little legacy from my side, right? Pretty much what you are doing, Girish. Yes, uh, because thank you. you. You're going to be doing are, are going to be your legacy, right? Which is going to be still And someone will listen to it, right? Sure, sure. Thank you. I, I listened to your uh, YouTube that you uh, uh, shared with me and then uh, 
I totally enjoyed it. It's it's more of uh, therapeutic for me. Uh, music is therapeutic for me overall. Yeah. Now, uh, during these uh, these COVID times that we uh, and pandemic times, do you feel that you are getting more creative because or experimenting more, uh, or do you think that are you just you're practicing your previous uh, uh, music? No, no, no. I think it was it was a great. Uh, a great time honestly if you reflect back you know i learned one statement they said that whenever you're going through a challenging time always ask this question so what is good about it or what is nice about happening right because that changes your orientation and i think i did a lot of stuff in um, during pandemic time especially on music front because i was home uh, you know i went to fp live facebook live for the very first time Girish, so I started doing balcony concerts. So everyone was stuck at home. No one could step out of the apartment. So I said, okay, let me, you know, we have a, a large apartment complex where there are six or seven towers and so many villas. So I was in the last tower in my in my condo. So I would get onto a balcony which faces the other towers and, and villas and I would start performing. Mm -hmm. And people said that, look, the ones who are very close to you can hear, but the ones who cannot, who are a little distant cannot hear. So I've started going on Facebook live as well. So I would get into the balcony, uh, you know, connect a phone. And that was the first time I did it Facebook live. Yes. And, um, you know, it was a huge hit. I would do it every week. And, you know, people, this, this gave reasons for people to come out to their balconies. People would connect their Bluetooth speakers and all the balconies would be buzzing with the music that I was singing. Yes. And so much so that NDTV, that's a, that's a big channel in India, Girish, mm -hmm. you may be aware. Mm -hmm. NDTV did a story mm -hmm. on my balcony concert and they actually came home. They recorded a live session that I was doing and, you know, they, they made a story and they published it on, uh, on NDTV. So, you know, I never imagined I would do that. I, I did not know how to go on Facebook live. So, yes. but that during that pandemic, it actually, so your point is absolutely right. It made me more creative. How do I get into a balcony, create a set, engage people who are stuck at homes mm -hmm. and, you know, do Facebook live and post that I've made it like I go live once every month on sure. Facebook. And I have so even now, so I have so many friends who just join over and they love, you know, me singing from this room in front of my computer and I have so many other people who are there. So definitely, it, uh, you know, made me a lot more creative uh, and, you know, uh, better at my music. Yes. So uh, friends, I have, I've known Vishal for many years now and, and I followed him, his journey on Facebook and, and WhatsApp also because I have his number. Uh, when I saw that in the balcony, the way he was doing that during the pandemic time, uh, that made a little inspiration for me that, you know what, we can do something. It doesn't matter where you're sitting. It could be a small studio apartment, could be a house, it could be anywhere. Um, but music doesn't stop or your passion doesn't stop. So it doesn't matter if a uh, pandemic comes in the way or another pandemic part two comes in. Your passion, no matter what it, what it is, it will come through. And that's what Vishal did. So, uh, Vishal, thank you for that. Uh, actually, I'm pretty sure there must be so many people out there uh, applauding you for that. So, I thank you for that. Yeah, no, thank you. It was it was indeed quite a pleasant surprise there. You know, people were looking for a source of entertainment uh, while they were at home. And this suddenly came. And, uh, yeah, everyone would, I would hear once I finish a song and I would hear the entire condo clapping, right? That was surreal for me. Yes. I've never done a huge, I had always dreamt about, you know, getting on a big stage and doing large concerts. So this was like my moment, right? Where I, and when I finish a song and then everyone is clapping and you could hear that, you know, coming from the farthest of the towers. Sure. Uh, so yeah, it felt good. So Vishal, now, now we know your journey. Now we know what you're doing today. Okay. So what is Vishal Malik in the next five years? Yeah, I think, <laughs> um, so Girish, definitely, uh, you know, keeping my passion and my uh, work kind of blending it as much as possible. As I said, you know, uh, thinking about what else can I do uh, on the lines of building it as an Ikigai. I still, after having worked for so long, I... Now believe that I believe in that concept of sponsoring your passion, mm -hmm. uh, right? So you do something for for living and you know maintaining a certain lifestyle that you want, and and while you do that, 
you you do not forget that you are blessed with you know you have a talent that you you should not be completely forgetting so i wanted to keep both these things alive my corporate professional life mm-hmm. and my music what i've started doing uh, girish i have started writing and that's again post i took the sabbatical i started you know writing original songs and composing original music mm-hmm. uh, yesterday i got my kind of first mixed and mastered track not first the second one i i in fact composed a song for my dog my dog turned 7 years old uh, in in uh, june this year uh, in june 2020 mm-hmm. so as a dedication for all the love that he's given to us i wrote a song uh, and i composed and i and it's it's there on spotify and it's there on all the streaming platforms it's called sunshine boy elvis because mm-hmm. my dog's name is elvis mm-hmm. uh, and now i'm putting up new uh, new music and i want to create my original music i want to you know build on this youtube channel that i've started and uh, you know continue working um uh, yeah in the spirit of just you know when i when i leave this world there will be something that people will you know people may listen to i i i, I don't know if if you would like to keep it or not but i learned something uh, recently which i would like to share sure. um uh, I I heard someone say that you know in Mexico I believe it was in Mexico that they say that you die three deaths right every individual dies three deaths mm-hmm. the first death is when you know the doctor says that you know everything is over uh, take the body home right so in a way the software is uh, gone now you're only left with the hardware mm-hmm. <clears throat> so that this is the first death the second death is when your body is either buried or cremated depending upon you know the ritual that you follow so now the software is also gone and the hardware is also gone yeah and the, the third part which i really moved me it said that the third death is when your name is taken for the last time in this world mm-hmm. right when your name is taken for the last time in this world so i don't know if you remember but i don't remember my great grandfather's name right my i still remember my grandfather's name but not my great grandfather's name right mm-hmm. and no one talks about him now right versus you we were talking about kishor kumar right I, he died so many years ago but he has left a legacy that we would always mm-hmm. remember Steve Jobs, right? There are people who've done something, uh, which is so. So their third death is either not going to happen or will happen very late, right? After their mm-hmm. first death. So I think uh, you know, and, and same for True Girish, as I was saying, right? What you're doing with this podcast, in a way, you know, this is we are leaving something that even after we are gone, this is going to be there. People can watch it. Yes. So, uh, so I want to continue to do that. Um, and I've also started uh, again in that spirit. I've also written a book. again in this uh, sabbatical i think i told you about it so you know i've written a book uh, which is kind of summarizing my experiences i'm currently working with pub, you know publishers to find out way to publish it and that is one area that i've never done so it is taking me a lot more time but i'm sure i'm going to figure that one out as well so my corporate career stays as is but i'm going to make sure that you know i'm not going to let go of all these creative things that i'm blessed with which is music these workshops that i do the youtube channel that i'm going to write you know and if i get inspiration for another book once i publish this i would do that so that's that's exactly how i want to kind of you know how i think i would be still working 5 years down the line and maybe have one or two chart busters on 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 spotify or some of these uh, you know streaming platforms yeah that, you know back in the days when someone they they release um, you know uh, songs and cds and all that right we used to go to their homes or we try to get into their homes and say you know what give me an autograph nowadays we can't do that so we'll we'll figure something out of how to do that between you and me and and i will uh, get an autograph from you uh, on your next uh, well, upcoming uh, leave you and before you go away from us right uh, i want you to jam some few music uh, if you don't mind uh, there must be something that you had in mind to uh, play today Sure. So let me try. I think again, it is uh, you know that's the only disadvantage of online. When you try and sing music over online, I think the 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 audio does not work somehow. Yes, But yes. let me still try and sure. see if that works. So let me pick up my guitar. Sure. Sure. Okay, Girish. So uh, let's see if this works. Um, you know, we were talking about passion and we were talking about music. So I'm reminded of uh, a Ranbir Kapoor music movie. I'm a big Bollywood sucker, so uh, there's a movie called Ye Jawani Hai Diwani. I don't know if you've seen that, where this guy who's so passionate about photography and travel that you know he leaves everything behind and he travels the world. He's a documentary filmmaker, and you know he goes around the world, uh, fulfilling his dream 
uh, you know of of traveling so uh, any 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 leaves everything behind right his girlfriend his family because that passion was so dear to him mm-hmm. and there is that song in this movie which is called shame malang si raate surang si i don't know if you've heard that song so let me just try and strum that again i don't know if you will get the audio clearly uh if not maybe i can separately record the song and send that to you <clears throat> but but let me but let me just try can you hear the guitar strumming you can right yeah. <clears throat> so here it goes uh let me try and see shame malang si rati surang ਸੀਓਪੇ <laughs> yeah but that we, uh, beautiful song it, it no it's one of the one of the favorite songs that I've uh, I've heard uh, after so long uh but thank you for bringing that uh, song back I hope everyone enjoyed uh, that uh that music it's it's amazing music thank you so much uh, Vishal for doing this for us and thanks for coming to back to basics do you have any one last words uh, before we head out I think uh, I would just reinforce my mentor's lesson if that helps you because that helped me a lot which is bring who you are into what you do uh, you know never let your passions go away because I feel you know you are being blessed with a certain passion with a certain talent which could be painting you know uh, making videos um, being a sports person right do not let it go waste you may not be able to make a career in that which is what i also did but you know you can still use that passion in what you do so bring who you are in what you do and then see how the magic happens thank you so much vishal for uh, coming on this show uh a very honored uh, for you to join this uh, podcast so again My guys so again guys i just wanted to give you the the, the last uh, quote of the day today uh music expressions that which cannot be put into words and that which cannot remain silent and that's by Victor Hugo as i said music is not words it's not language it's, it's all about happiness sadness and everything else i hope you enjoy the show but i will uh, see you next week and as usual as always everything in life goes right back to basics and that's what we did today thank you again guys and i'll see you next week <laughs>